Hello and welcome back to OS, OS video tutorials. I am going to go through the basics of the editor in this tutorial number two, picking up where we last left off with our timed song. I'll just open up OS and make sure the video is centered. Good enough. Now our song is listed in this mess of songs somewhere. There are several ways to find your song. You can sort by artist, sort by difficulty, creator, whatever you want. I prefer to actually just manually type in a portion of the name to narrow down the search. And this I typed in make. That's the only thing that I have a match for. That's our map. So I open it up and we're in the Compose menu. Now there's a lot to take in right off the bat. Up here we have our timeline which will show little white ticks and depending on your snap divisor up here, red ticks or blue ticks, purple and yellow. That message pops up to warn you not to use eighth notes because generally if you're using eighth notes it means your song's not timed correctly. Anyhow. Since it's an easy map, a general rule of thumb is to avoid anything beyond a half a beat snap. Because if you're snapping to quarters or eighths, either the song is timed incorrectly or you're going to end up making the song more difficult than an easy map. So over on the left here we have four tools. So there's the select tool which lets you click and drag and highlight some notes and move them around or delete them as you so choose. Second map, the second button lets you place hit circles on the map. The third is the slider tool. You click once to set your starting point, then click anywhere you want to add vertexes, vertices, sorry, to curve your slider. If you double click, it'll turn the square red, which acts as another anchor point to make more interesting shaped sliders. To end placing your points you just right click where you want your last point to be and then you have your slider. You can, you can adjust the individual points here as well after you've placed your map in case you need to do some fine tuning for it. And of course the spinner. This is the simplest to place down. Just click and then scroll along the timeline to when you want it to end and right click to tell it to end. On the left here we have a few tools just to add to the aesthetics of the map. There's the new combo tool which will change the color of your notes as well as start a new combo. So I've got three green notes and now my next note is going to be blue because it's a new combo. Combos are important for keeping your map balanced. They affect score as well as your uh, life recovery. Here we have whistle and finish which adjust how your notes sound. If I just place a standard note, I can add a whistle to it, a finishing sound to it, oops, damn it, or I can add both. These just add a nice little touch. Grid snapping on and off is basically pretty self-explanatory. When I have it on, the note will snap to these grid lines on the play field. If I disable it, it will let me place it freely. Distance snap is something I, I like to use the Alt hotkey for. You place one note and then with distance snap on, it will give you a recommendation of where to place your next note. With that on, you hold Alt to disable it and with it off, you hold Alt to enable it. So here if I press Alt, it will give me a recommendation of where to put my next note. So that's the basics of the tools. There's some other techniques you can use in the options menu. They allow you to change your slider curve type so that you go from straight sliders to Catmull ROM sliders, which are like a mix between straight and smooth. And lastly we have the Bezier, which does its best to approximate a completely even smooth curve. There's a lot more options to go through. Many of them have hotkeys to change your tabs, change your grid level, 
change your timing. There's all sorts of things here. Shortcuts to the web, information. Now I'm going to get started, but before I actually start placing notes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the map and pick out some good times to put breaks in, like the original who ended in EBA. There are breaks in between sections so you're not playing everything all at once. What I like to do is, where I'm going to place my first beat, I will add what is called a bookmark to the timer. Let me just find the spot here. I'm going to start my map right here on this spot. So I'm going to go down to the timeline here, and this allows you to seek through the map. I'm going to go and press this plus symbol, which will put a bookmark down, and that only shows up in the editor. You won't notice this when you're actually playing the map. This is just for reference. I usually like to put one at the start and end of each section, so you can easily see the balance between playing and not playing. Now I'm on a time restraint, so I might have to cut the video a bit but I'm going to play through the song and just find the bridges in the song, anywhere that would make for a good break. Now this part right here sounds like it would make for a good break, so I'm going to go back and find the last beat of this section. I'm going too close. Let's say that's it there. Then I'm going to press plus. And that gives us the size right there of our first section. Let this play until I find the next beat to start it on again. I'm going to go plus. And now that's our first break. I'm going to cut the video and find the rest of the break points so we can continue without eating up too much time. Actually, we're already doing pretty good. I'm going to go and finish this off and then just give a quick review before we finish off for good. Alright, I have now placed all of the bookmarks, the little blue lines, on the timeline. If we zoom in here you can see them all. Now on the left we'll have these options up here. These let you quickly seek through the uh, timeline to your bookmarks. And the minus will delete any bookmarks you place that you no longer want. Reset obviously resets all bookmarks. Now I know there are a couple things I've missed that I will get to later. But if you want to go ahead and start composing your beat map without me, you can just go ahead and hover your mouse. All of the uh, buttons in the editor will have little tooltips beside them that are fairly self-explanatory. Next time I'm going to go over actually placing all the notes, different patterns you can think of, etiquette, guidelines to follow when making your beat map to make it as user-friendly and as acceptable as possible. So stay tuned for that and sorry I rambled on this one so much.